Alrighty, here we go. For some reason I might be fro I may be frozen. My picture looks a little bit strange, but we are here. We're ready to go. Welcome to the tripod, boys and girls. And it's finals time. Super stoked about this. Week one of the NRL finals coming up this weekend. Been waiting a long time for this one. It's been an absolute cracker of a regular season. Been a great regular season. And um, coming off the best round of this year, 20 wins and two losses. Um, so looking to continue that throughout the finals. And um, yeah, just super, super excited for the NRL finals to roll around. It's been a crazy week in sports. Like you said, Jacob, there's not enough hours in the day to watch everything. Yes, I can confirm you do look a bit strange, but that actually is just how you yeah, look. I'm sorry true. to be that's the one to true. break it to you. It's been an awesome season. We enjoy watching the footy every week, but there's something that's just next level about watching finals when it's all on the line. So we can't wait for it. And while there's going to be a lot of content out there on TV and on the internet and on Facebook talking about the finals footy that's coming up, where our point of difference is we break it down from a punning perspective and a way that you can actually beat the bookies. We've proven you can do it for five seasons. This is our fifth season. It's not just our best round of the season, round 25, that we ended with. We spoke about it in our recap. That was probably our best round for best bets that we've ever had with 20 wins, two losses, and the two losses could not have been more unlucky. I mean, we've had one or two better rounds if you include multis because we've hit 100 to once. But in terms of the best bets... That was as good as it got. So great form. We haven't had a round where we didn't win money in over a month. So we've got it. We're seeing the ball well, and we like a side in all four of the finals games. We can tell you that too. So can't wait to break it down. Now, obviously, um, half the games to go through, but they're bigger games, so we might go a little more in depth with each one. Yeah, indeed, and it's rare. It's actually very rare. I get, I get that there's only four games this week, but it is rare for us to be on the same side of every single one of these games. Generally, we'll have one game or so where we disagree or that we don't love a side, but we're on the same side of all of these this week. One comment flowing through from Farhat. What's your best tip that could make me win, mate? We're going to go through that over the next 30 minutes or so. We're going to give you our best bets for each of the NRL finals games um, and hopefully win you some more money. Let's start off with Thursday night. Absolute cracker. The rematch from last Thursday night. The Roosters laying eight points, hosting the Rabbitohs. 34 and a half is the total. I guess, yeah, we, I mean, we were um, on the under last week. We won on that one. Um, and the Rabbits got the upset victory down 10-2, come all the way back and win that one. Um, but it was not without a cost. They were battered and bruised in that game. It was an absolute grind fest of a game. The Roosters, you know, they didn't need the win there. The Rabbits had to have that one to shore up a top four spot, which they got. Um, but now they're missing Gagai. Sam Burgess is out. I get that they get back James Roberts and the and the other Burgess boys. Um, but yeah, just looking at that game, they were the walking wounded, the Rabbits, in that game. Like even Reynolds, you know, was, was hobbling there at the end. And, you know, we talk about this all the time, you know, recent revenge. Um, and so that's what the Roosters have going for them here. But, you know, in, in all reality, in a finals game, you know, both sides are going to come in fully motivated. What you do gain from a loss in the Roosters scenario is that you do gain, you know, the coach is going to be more willing to make adjustments, um, you know, because obviously they lost the game um, than the Rabbitohs are for this one. And also just the fact that the Roosters are an absolute juggernaut of a team. You get Kiri back and he's nice and rested. Taukiaho back, Brett Morris back, you know, Orbison back. So this team is on another level. And if you'll notice there, you know, obviously we've got four best bets on the board right now, but that top one is not available anymore. That Roosters minus four and a half. And that is why it pays to be in our group on Facebook and to be in the tripod app, especially because we released that line of Roosters minus four and a half at a dollar ninety on Unibet a few days back. And that line is now nowhere to be seen, is it, Jacob? No, that's the beauty of having the tripod out because we posted on Sunday, we were just looking at it going, hang on, Burgess already accepted the guilty play. He was out. We know how important he is. And a number of other reasons why we knew we'd probably like the Roosters in this game and you've started to you know, break down why. And you could get minus 5.5 on Unibet, minus 4.5 on Bet365. I mean, those were available all day Sunday. Yes. It's not like it was available for five minutes for a $5 bet. And then that line was over six everywhere by, you know, by yesterday. And now it's you're lucky to get a flat eight. It's minus yeah. eight and a half, and you wouldn't feel as confident laying that. That's a great number. But yeah, as you say, like the Roosters, they get to bring back some key players into this game. And you mentioned Kiri rested. I mean, he's just had a newborn baby, so I don't know how much sleep he's getting, but the body is rested. The body's rested. Um, 
And yeah, I totally agree. I don't buy into revenge so much, although it doesn't do the Rabbitohs any favours that they beat the Roosters this season in round one and round yes. 25. It's not so much... Obviously, revenge can add a bit of motivation, like we're not going to let these guys beat us again. But when everyone you know needs this game like blood, it's more that the Rabbitohs have shown their hand already and that they've shown how, especially what they did from half time last week down 10-2 to come back and win that game. And I feel like... The Roosters, I feel like the Roosters can have a trick up their sleeve and a little bit more to show with key players coming back into this team. They're fresher. Now, Roberts is a big in, but they lose Gagai, as you said. And, you know, the game plan for the Bunnies, I feel, is they're going to have to junk it up. They want it to be very stop-start. What The only advantage I could see would be the, the props, like the in the middle of the field, the big bodies. Because, like, if, um, if Liam Knight is good to play, he's obviously, they've said he's passed concussion so far. Britt has had a good season. Totola... Um, and obviously Tom and George, like they just want to make this a a bruiser in the middle of the field, whereas the Roosters want a bit more free-flowing footy, want to yeah. get it to their playmakers and want to get it to the outside back. So the Rabbitohs' only chance is going to have to be very high completions, very good end of sets, very good kicking. That's just to keep it close, and that's the best they can hope for. But I do think the Roosters' class will win out, and hence all of our best bets. I think the Roosters have been waiting all year for a game that really matters, and, and they'll show what they can really do. Yeah, we're on the Roosters in this one. Seems like a square side, but I guess not that square considering that the Rabbits just beat them last week. So we're going to take the Roosters laying three and a half points in the first half. That one is a dollar eighty-eight on Bet Easy. We're going to do the same in the second half. That one's a dollar eighty-two on UniBet, and we're going to take the Roosters halftime full time. That one is a dollar eighty on Bet Three Six Five. Uh, let's move on to the Friday night game. We've got the Storm laying six and a half. No, that was the Friday night. Oh, sorry. Different format. Sorry. Made yeah, you're finals. right. You're right. Uh, the Storm laying five and a half points, hosting the Raiders. 36 and a half points is the total. Now, the Storm are a juggernaut. We've said this many times before. They're a historically good team. I think you mentioned last week, Jacob, that the combined you know points that they've lost by in this season has been eight points. So we know what this Storm team is. And we spoke about you know, revenge and that kind of thing in, in regards to the Roosters-Raiders game. Oh, sorry, the Roosters-Rabbits game. And you may say the same thing for this one, where the Storm were 18 nil up only a few weeks ago, and the Raiders end up coming back in one of the most ridiculous comebacks I've ever seen in my life, being down 18 nil to the Storm, and get the win there. Um, so look, the Storm are going to be amped for this one, no doubt. But like you said, Jacob, recent revenge doesn't matter too much in the finals game. Um, because the Raiders are going to completely be up for this one. Look, six and a half, it doesn't seem like that many points. A lot of, you know, your average punters will say the Storm will absolutely roll in this one. But let's just look at the body of work for these two teams throughout the season. Yes, the Storm have by far and away been the best regular season team. But this Raiders side has been legit. And they've been legit when they've played good teams. They obviously beat the Storm a few weeks back and really had a good chance to beat the Roosters the week before. I know that the Storm, you know, have a few people rested from last week, but so do the Raiders. The Raiders have been looking forward to this game. They're not just happy that they made the finals this uh, this year. They have been, you know, they're ready to go. They rested players last week for a reason. I think that was a very smart move on their part against the Warriors. They lose the game, but who cares? They were going to be in the finals anyway. So you get a rested Raiders team, and I really do think they can turn this into a grind. I know that the Storm have a strong home field advantage there, but... Look, I think that the Raiders can hang here and, you know, I trust them to be able to play a good game when it counts because I haven't seen anything other than that from them this season. I know that the Storm will put in a good effort, but I see this as a close grind and I can see the Raiders winning this one. Yeah, if you want to look back at the, you know, massive upset that the Raiders pulled a few weeks ago and dismiss it as a lucky blip because the Storm, as you say, had only lost three games before that one by a combined four points and then lost that one by four, 22 to 18 after the Storm led 18 nil. But to say anything but the Raiders thoroughly deserved that one would be not doing them justice because you have to understand the Raiders had two different players sent in the bin in that first half. The Raiders conceded a try from an intercept as well and still won the game. So when they played 13 on 13, they were far superior. Now, you can also say the Storm were flat and didn't need the game or weren't as hungry, and that may be true, but this Raiders side has belief. And look, they've got a lot of um, praise for their recruits. You know, Nickel Clockstad at fullback's been a revelation. Bateman, 
has been sensational. But a guy who probably hasn't got his man, and then everyone points to the Poms on the team, Whitehead, Sutton, obviously, Hodgson pulling the strings. Yep. The guy who hasn't got as much accolades is Papali. I feel yep. he's had a career season, a guy who we always knew he had that punch, but his work rate is up another level. He was also one of Queensland's best in all three of the Origin games too. And Queensland had an outmatched forward pack. But he's been awesome. He scored the winning try against yes. the Storm. And yep. and as you say, they rested guys. Let's name them. So Nickel Klockstad, Soliola, Bateman, yep. Rapana, Leilua, Tapane all come back. Now, yep. Horsburgh, I'm hearing, may fail the concussion test. And obviously, Hudson Young is not going to play again for a number of weeks. But they've got the other young forwards to cover that, like Emre Gula can come into this team. That's like for like. The Storm, Munster was rested. Now, that's good in terms that he's fresh, but he's been he's had a shoulder complaint. You yep. can't just dismiss that because he hasn't been totally carving up the last month. So, you know, is he 100% not sure? Addo Carr comes in fresh and Brandon Smith. They are close to full strength. They've gone with Hughes at, at seven. Now, Hughes is not uh, the game manager and doesn't have the control that a Brodie Croft has, but he's a better ball runner, and they gain a bit more of the playmaking from obviously what Cameron Smith can do from hooker too and then Pappenhausen is their X factor you know can make a break if given a a small you know opening at any moment but also isn't the playmaker um at at number one and and is a little bit more inexperienced those those openings and free-flowing football it's not as prevalent in finals games just like origin as it is in the regular season so there won't be 100 percent you know yeah those games where New South Wales picked like like Addo Carr and James Roberts and everyone thought they were just going to run rings around Queensland. Then what they realized was it's a different level. It's a grind and the Raiders will get in there and they'll wrestle just with the storm too. So we also think that if you had to pick a a total, we'd be trending unders as well. So all in all, I think, yeah, whether or not the Raiders win this game, we know that that Bellamy will have a game plan for how to beat the Raiders. But I really feel this side is built to do special things this year and they can absolutely push with them. And I'm just the fact that we're getting over that six Yep. is enough that I believe we're getting good value on the Raiders in this one. 100%. The one thing that worries me is whether the Storm will almost 99% win the penalty count down there in Melbourne. You fail, um, and in a way, that's built into the home field advantage true. that the crowd boos, you know, and they influence one or two 50-50 calls. And yeah, no, wouldn't surprise me at all. Indeed. Either way, we are on the Raiders in this one. We're taking four bets as of now. And obviously, make sure that you tune into the Tripod app tomorrow around lunchtime if we release any more which we nearly will oh nearly 100 percent will we're taking a mechanical raiders plus eight it ends up being a dollar 80 we're going to do it by 58 percent of our stake on the raiders plus eight and a half that's a dollar 72 on neds and the other 42 percent on the raiders plus six and a half at a dollar 91 on bet 365 we're going to take the raiders to win a half that's a dollar 80 on bet easy and we're going to make a mechanical raiders plus four in the first half at a dollar eighty-five, it's ninety-two percent of our stake on the Raiders plus two and a half points in the first half. That one's two dollars and one cent on Bet Easy, and the rest of the eight percent on the Storm to lead by exactly four at halftime. You'll find that bet at thirteen dollars on either Neds, Bet Three Six Five, or Ladbrokes. You'll have to go to the halftime handicap, and you'll have to look for the tie margin there, and it'll say you know zero to four. You'll be able to find it there. You'll know what it is because it's $13. And we're also going to take under six and a half tries for the game. That is $1.83 on Sportsbet. So to explain the halftime line, so you can get Raiders plus two and a half or plus three and a half anywhere you want for this game. Plus three and a half probably doesn't help you. It's very rare a team will win a half by three, a first half by three points. But the way we've bet it, by putting that 8% of your normal stake on Storm by exactly four, achieves money back if the Storm is up by four. So really, we're only going to lose. I mean, we'll lose if the Raiders lose the half by three, but that's not going to happen. But we're really only going to lose if they lose the half by six or more. And we've spoken about why we think it's going to be a close game. One more thing, because we do think the Roosters are going to win the night before, that makes this game even more high stakes, assuming the Roosters do win. Because obviously what's up for grabs is a buy, you know, 14-day prep, a home prelim, but you also would guarantee you will avoid the Roosters until the grand final. And there's even that chance. If the Raiders were to upset the Storm, they're thinking to themselves, well, now in the grand final, you know, we're only going to have to meet either the Storm or the Roosters once yeah. more. You'd be pushing the two biggest heavyweights onto one side of the draw. True, and true. vice versa for the Storm, they'd know they can avoid the Roosters. And that's obviously the team no one wants to play in the final. So it's just, it's all to play for at Amy Park on Saturday. Yep, should be an absolute cracker. And the next one up is Manly plus four and a half points 
hosting the Sharkies. 38 and a half points is the total. Now, this is going to be a complete Sharps versus Squares matchup, in my opinion. Every average punter is going to say the Sharks are going to be way too good here. And look, they might be. They have a far superior roster. I know Matt Moylan listed in the reserves there, but even if he doesn't play, you look up and down this Sharkies roster, and, and like I've said before, this is a team that can contend when fully healthy, and they are pretty much fully healthy. On the flip side, you have a manly team that is not fully healthy. But we all know about that. We know Tommy Turbo has been out. He's been out for a couple of weeks now. And they're missing to power as well, which certainly hurts. Um, but they are missing, you know, a bunch more. Sirenen, Joel Thompson, amongst others. So they've got the cluster injuries in the forward pack. So much so that they've had to bring a T-Rex in from reserve grade. He's listed on the reserves. He may or may not play. What sort of shape he's in and how good he is, I'm not sure. But, you know, I get that it's dire straits for Manly. But they must have seen something there. Um, from his play in reserve grade, grade to be able to bring him back. And and look, I have no doubt that if he does, does get called into the side to actually play, he will do a job. Look, this line's gone too far here. Manly, like I've said before, this game is being played at Brookvale or Lotto Land or whatever you call it these days. Historically, very, very home strong field advantage for Manly. The strongest, in fact, home field advantage in terms of betting in the NRL historically. And look, you know, this line's telling us that the Sharks are seven, seven and a half points better than Manly. Are they that much better? I don't think so. Look, the Sharks are the superior team, don't get me wrong, but I do trust Manly to be able to hang here, especially at home. They still have, you know, a, a solid enough roster to get the job done here. And home ground, home field is a little bit underrated in the um, in the NRL finals, I think. Look, they're going to get a great turnout out there. Um, and I just think that, you know, they're arguably the better coach team here. They should be able to put in 100%. They are going to, you know... It's almost that injured, not in, it's not necessarily injured player theory because Tommy Turbo has been out for a number of weeks now, but it's, you know... Well, he's been out one week, hasn't he? Yeah, well, yeah. But I mean, like it's it's not like they've just lost him and, you know... Um, but what I'm saying is they're going to... It's going to be that, like, you against me, us against the world mentality. They are going to dig in deep here, and I think that they believe that they have a chance to win this one, and, and I do as well, and I think the line's just crept up too far where there's just not enough respect given to this relatively depleted Manly side. Yeah, you're talking about the advantage they get at Lotto Land, so we should probably acknowledge the news that came through, that there's the this possibility that they've they've found these traces of asbestos yeah, true, at true. the stadium and that it could get moved. I haven't heard anything more since Monday, so I feel it would be diabolical that they couldn't, whatever, remove any risk and get that game played well, there. I, I feel like they said, they said they had 24 hours to fix it. If they were going to move it, we would have heard already, I think. Exactly. That's why I assume it is a lot of that. It is, it is a big advantage because Manly haven't had many trips to the finals in recent years. I think they had one game and they got knocked out first week in an upset um, where Penrith got some favourable calls and I remember Barrett blowing his lid, but... Dez has them back there, and it's not maybe they've got the better coach. They do have the better coach. Dez has worked magic this year, and they're very unlucky to you know not be in the top four at the end of the day. And um, you know last week they had nothing to play for, and it's a shame if he, if he did make a mistake, he played too many of his key guys last week because Tapao gets suspended for this game for a high shot. You know what? Why was he playing last week? Yeah. I would have rested more players for Manly. That is a big loss. Um, I mean, yeah, T Rex back. Obviously, Dez loves him. Gajetski <laughs> back. Is, is a big in as well. But if you just look at the back line. Now, you know, Trebojevic out is huge. You've got to acknowledge yes. it. Um, when he's at his best, he is right there with the Tedesco and RTS to me as best player in Great. the game for how much he can affect, you know, the way the opposition has to game plan around him and what he can do. In saying that, they are pretty fortunate that Brendan Elliott has been a really serviceable backup. And when he's come in, he he's hasn't let solid. him down. He's done a good job. But look at the whole back line. Elliott. Parker, Sully, Garrick. I mean, they all have had the best season of their career, without question. It's not a fluke that they've all had their best season. Like, Dez is getting the best out of these guys. So, on paper, they don't look as good as people like, you know, Dugan and, and Morris. But the truth is that these these guys are up and coming, playing their very best, whereas those other blokes on the Sharks. And what I'm hearing is that Moylan's very unlikely to play. So, is there actually that much of an edge in the back line? I mean, Mulatalo was one of the Sharks' best players in their win over the Tigers. Sure. He's... He, did he get an injury or suspension in the end? He's out for this one. Mm-hmm. So they're going to have to cover him with Aaron Gray. Someone in our, in our um, group once described Aaron Gray as Josh Dugan without the good parts. So that's not <laughs> that's a bit unkind there. But I just feel, yeah, Manly can't win the comp anymore. But I could see a gargantuan home effort here. And I think Dez can, can game plan enough 
to win this one. An underrated factor as well for the Sharks um, is the fact they've been playing basically must win for the last six weeks. Now, if you dive into those last six weeks, they did have a couple losses. They lost a very close one to the Panthers, but then a couple other losses fell their way, kept them in it. And when they played the Raiders, okay, they probably knew if they lost their season wasn't over, but they played as if it was must win because it was Gallon's, you know, home farewell. Yep. That takes it out of you, playing like do or die and amping yourself up and, you know, just that laser focus every single week. So I actually think how much more juice have the Sharks got left? And what, as you say, while they're, they're the better side and you hand it to Sean Johnson, um, he was their best player. He, he won them the game basically against the Tigers. But, you know, hearing the interviews after that, Johnson was nearly scratched right up until a captain's run. So even his quad is, is suspect too. I feel like so he's close to being enough. scratched before every fucking Exactly. Game. And if you take Manly and, and Johnson twinges his quad, you know, it's a totally different kettle of fish. I feel like the best two players on the field on Saturday night can be DCE and, and Jake Trebojevic. And Manly can win this game. Not only is it plus four and a half everywhere and you can get like a dollar ninety five or two dollars. I mean, as you can see on the screen, we're getting plus six and a half. Too many points. I like the home dog Manly Seagulls here. Indeed we have, and our good rate good mate Roran in the comments has mentioned that you can get plus seven and a half at a dollar eighty. So if you're looking at a little bit more safety there, certainly feel free to take that one. Yeah, because uh, gonna... Gallon could kick a field goal if yes. they're up six Yes, Yeah, it's true. And actually I do have the price wrong there, but it is Manly plus six and a half. At a dollar eighty-five on Bet three six five, you just have to go into the alt market there. Uh, we're going to take the Sharks might under twenty-two and a half points. That one's a dollar eighty on Bet three six five as well. And staying on Bet three six five, we will be taking the Sharkies to not score three unanswered tries. That one is a dollar eighty-seven. Oh, like I said, on Bet three six five. Now we move to the last game of the round. Should be an absolute cracker. As well, we got the Eels laying four and a half points, hosting the Broncos. Forty and a half points is the total. Oh, look, I guess in my opinion, these are two teams that quite honestly have been moving in opposite directions in the back half of the season. I still do not believe that this Broncos side is worthy of a top eight spot, but here they are. They find themselves in the top eight despite losing to the Bulldogs last week in a game that they didn't need, but in a game where... I thought that they actually did try and just got outplayed by the Bulldogs. Meanwhile, the Eels, you know, get a much need well, not much needed, but a meaningless win against Manly, but a little bit of a confidence booster. And look, they get to stay at home for two weeks in a row now, which I think helps a lot. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, someone in the comments or Jacob, I think they're 10 and 2 at Bankwest Stadium. This I know they've season. only lost twice. Obviously, um, they only they only played um, a few weeks into the season. So I'm not sure if they played like a a pseudo home game at any other ground. But yeah. yeah, only two losses at home. Yeah, so um, the Eels are a dynamite there at Bank West. They're going to get an awesome turnout there. And I think they're the superior team here to the Broncos. And, and not by a slim margin. I think that the Eels are a much better team here. I think they're a bit better built for finals footy as well. I mean, their halves are much better than the Broncos. I mean, Darius Boyd has just been a passenger, really. And you know, obviously, there's been calls for him to to hang up the boots at the end of the season. We've probably been saying this for the last two or three years. But, look, he's not going to be the one to win you the game here. It's going to have to be on the back of the Brisbane Broncos forwards, who are elite. And now you get Joe Off and Gowie back as well, which is a boost. But, look, when's the last time that a team has won the NRL Premiership without a decent set of halves? I couldn't even tell you the last time. And the Broncos have, in my opinion, one of the worst halves combos in the entire comp. Mitch Moses has gone to another level this year. And, and look, I know that you lose Kane Evans, but you get back Nathan Brown. And he's been rested. He's off suspension. He's been rested for a couple of weeks. It's going to be a boost to the Eels forward pack there. I just think we're getting a superior team here at Bank West, which has been a fortress for them this year. I think it has become almost one of the strongest home field advantages in the NRL. Plus, you know, we mentioned revenge factor, and it's not a huge deal, but, you know, the Eels lost by one point to the Broncos last time they played in a, in a pretty, you know, bitter game there. Um, so they're going to want max revenge there, and they're going to make the necessary adjustments here. I just think that this line is a little bit too low for me. I think we're getting a much better team at home in form against the Broncos side that I really think, you know, they, I'm not going to say they're going to blow out, but they have the potential to blow this Broncos team out, in my opinion. So I like the Eels here to get the job done at home. 
It's funny you bag Darius Boyd, and I've bagged him plenty of times too, and I don't think he should be there. But I think he was man of the match when these two played last time. I think he scored a try off a kick. And was, he actually, he, was he actually and he man actually of the match, or did he just get it? Yeah, he just he kind of just accumulated some stats. I mean, you wonder why Darius Boyd likes taking a quick tap or scooting from dummy half when it's not even oh, the best option. My God. It's to pad his stats up to make it's it look like he's actually doing something. But what you can't deny is the Broncos forward pack, and everyone knows this, but... Really, it's an all-rep pack when you consider yep. that often Gowie's oh, back played for Queensland this year. Lodge was on the fringe of the New South Wales forward pack, and yep. New South Wales is stacked forwards. Obviously, Haas debuted. Yep. Dave Fafita, Gillette has played rep for many years. McCulloch even debuted for Queensland last year. So it's an all-rep. But, but the Eels, while they didn't win at Suncorp, they proved they could handle them. And the Eels didn't have Nathan Brown in that game at Suncorp. And they get him back. It was also Fergo's first game back from a yep. shitload of like health <laughs> issues. And he was like still you know, not in full shape and fitness. And I feel like considering he was their best player for the first half of the season, that's significant that he's got the match fitness back. And Moreira comes into this team too while Evans is out. And... I think that the key is Mitch Moses. I think he's yep. been exceptional this year. He's really taking ownership of this team. Hopefully he can kick goals because it's a little bit hit or miss, but I think his stats are a little bit better this season. But the other thing he's is the fact right that the season. Eels lost the game at Suncorp where they scored more tries and they got a bit unlucky with the forward pass call and stuff like that and obviously you know losing extra time, it's a coin toss. Brisbane needed that game a lot more than the Eels at the time. Yes. Whereas now, you know, Everyone is desperate. It's it's at Wank Best Stadium and it's do or die because you go on fishing on Monday if um well you got Mad Monday basically the next True. day. You don't win this game. I'm with you. I think that the Eels should be too good. Yeah, well, we've just got two best bets as of now. Possibly add some more tomorrow, but we're taking a mechanical Eels minus four points. That's going to be a dollar eighty four. It's fifty percent, fifty six percent of our stake on the Eels minus three and a half. That's a dollar seventy seven in the sports bet pick your own line section. And the remaining 44% on the Eels minus four and a half points. That one is a dollar ninety-two on Unibet. Tell me if you'd agree, Jacob, but if I was uh, just a regular punter that's listening to this, I would probably just play the Eels minus three and a half at a dollar seventy-seven. That's probably the better bet there. Um, and the second bet here is the Eels race to twenty points. That one's a dollar ninety on sports bet. And that final should be an absolute cracking weekend, Jacob. I don't know about you. I can't wait. I can't wait either. Yeah, we spoke about all the sport that's on our plate. Um, we should shout out Neddy, who's in our group and in our app. Because oh, what did he go? It. Did he go, what, 15 and 4? 15 and 3. Not 15 and 3 on NFL Best Bets. Well, we didn't. We honestly just felt we did not have enough time to do yeah. justice to share some NFL picks. And we both threw on a couple of multis for ourselves, and I can tell you. The number of multis I had that lost by one leg. So we He's would have lying. actually killed He's it if we'd shared some NFL picks with you guys. But it's okay because Neddy crushed it for you. So there's so much sport going on and plenty of good tips um, in the app and in the group. But it is all about the rugby league for us. And each one of these games basically can't miss footy. So um, we've given you a pretty in-depth breakdown. And hopefully we can make more money again. Keep, keep rolling into the finals. Absolutely. Between us and Neddy, we went 35 and five on the weekend between NRL and NFL. And if any of you guys are listening out there that have the tripod app and do want to give Neddy a follow, just type his name into the search bar, N-E-D-D-Y. I know that after he went 15 and three this weekend, I think he got about 250 new followers and he was just like, what the fuck is going on? I said, that's what happens when you go 15 and three on the week, mate. So um, we are absolutely stoked for the NRL finals to start up. Make sure you're in our group on Facebook. Tripod Punters Tips Forum. We'll be posting game threads up there, and I know that these game threads will probably get a lot more comments and banter than, than most of the regular season games. But all of these very intriguing, very, very intriguing matchups, that's for sure. So, And we've got one game sprinkled in there where the uh, the home team isn't actually favoured, which is kind of uncommon for the finals. But should be and, cracking... And sorry, one last thing as well. Yes, we, we said this on Sunday, but we won the punting comp. We beat Punt Harbour Group that's got three times as many people. Um, yes! We had three entries in an NRL comp where you got yes! 10,000 to play with. Those three entries returned over a million dollars on just on what betting on head-to-heads <laughs> on the NRL last round. So we won the comp. We're going to be giving out 500 bucks to five people who were in it. That's going to be tomorrow. I'm going to make it random by assigning people who entered a jersey number or a player in the footy tomorrow night. And if that player scores one of the first five tries, they'll get 100 bucks just to make give them a bit more excitement. We're also going to choose a worthy cause amongst the group 
that we're going to donate 500 bucks to as well on behalf of the group. So we'll put that in a poll. So just another thing to look forward to and get involved in if you're interested in our group. Absolutely, mate. And that will be in our Facebook group. We'll be doing that. So make sure you're in there. There's a link in the description to this video if you're not in there already. But thanks once again for tuning in, guys. And we will catch you in the group and in the app. And we'll see you on Sunday to break down hopefully another winning round. Catch you then.